once you have a font that you actually want to use in your comic, let's see how we can actually work with it and kind of make some adjustments to it. I'm going to change to a different font, something a little more comic-y. How about uh, Alex Toth? Okay, after the great comic book artist, this font is named. And uh, this font looks kind of how he wrote. Wait, this isn't, that's not it. <laughs> Alex Toth, excuse me. There we go. So this is kind of how his handwriting looked when he did his lettering, I guess. Or maybe his signature. I'll leave it kind of large so we can see it at this level. And uh, so basically, yeah, you, you would type what you want. And I just selected, and I would probably want this on center. This You want this on horizontal. I leave anti-aliasing on, and these are bold, horizontal, underline, and strike through, but uh, I'm not going to use any of those right now. So, um, a day dawned in the city. Uh, cats howled. <laughs> okay, a very descriptive panel or something. And uh, so yeah, I can resize it. And this works, this lettering, if you used Photoshop's lettering, it, it works a little differently because Photoshop's, when you resize it, it'll actually move words to the next line and kind of fit them in in a different way. This keeps everything exactly as you write it, which is, at first it kind of bothered me, but as I started working with it, I, I liked it because there's going to be times when you need to kind of rearrange your your words in different ways so that you can make the best, best use of your panels and uh, not block too much of your image. So I actually like this this system now. It just took me a while to get used to. And uh, yeah, so I, I do prefer it. Anyways, um, so you can rearrange stuff like that. You can make things bold. You can make a single word bold, for example, or italic or bold italic or underline strike through, and so on. You can also take that word or a single word and change the font to something else, just that word. And that's kind of nice. I'm going to undo that. And again, you can make further changes within the uh, subtool detail. And to move the font or the words around, you just hover near the line and you'll get this move layer or move, yeah, move layer tool that'll let you do that. So overall, this offers you a lot of control over how your, your words are going to look on the page. I didn't mention this. Let me show you. If we go to the sub tool menu, we have, let's see, we can change the word spacing, which is right and left, as you can see. Uh, you can change the line if you go to text no excuse me if you go to line space you can change the spacing between each line which is also helpful some fonts are going to be better at this than others like this one look, looked fine how it was but um, some of them show up not quite how you want them so play around with these but i think those are the two that i use the most line spacing and um, word space but these other ones there's a lot more changes you can make that uh, you might want to explore. There's some other things you can do with the text. If we uh, if we wanted to change the color, we just right now it's using the foreground color, and we can just change the color at any time by doing that. We could also um, make changes to it after we finish. Right now, you notice that these are on separate layers, this word and this a day dawned. And neither of these are rasterized. So if we wanted to do anything like filters or uh, tone changes and so on, we would need to rasterize this. And uh, sometimes we want to, but be careful because if you need to, if you think you might need to uh, make changes to the lettering later on, it, you might want to make a copy and keep one unrun unrosterized that way you can like uh, keep it there as a backup so if i did want to uh rosterize this though i would just right click and rosterize and now you can no longer 
make changes to it. It's, it started a new layer when I did that. So I'm going to escape. And like I said, you can, you know, use a filter and blur this. I want a Gaussian blur. I could blur the lettering. And so on. I could uh, use any of the transformation tools, fisheye lens. And do things like that and so on. I think you get the idea, but if you're just remember that if you ever see like these menus show up and they're not highlighted, it probably means you need to rasterize something. And you can also uh, change the color if it's all black. That's usually the easiest way to change all the color is just go and use your, your color um, picker thing here and it changed it. This doesn't have to be rasterized to change and you can change it to any color, obviously word and so on and you can also do tones and everything else that you can do but just remember if, if it's not working rasterize it you could also once it's rasterized uh, even use like for example the auto select tool and like let's say i wanted to select the black text and i wanted to have it scale kind of within So like basically everything inside is kind of selected and oops, I'm still in the wrong layer. There we go. So that's one thing you can do. There's actually tools for similar effects, but uh, I just kind of wanted to do this manually to show you that you can, you know, select it once it is rasterized. Whereas this one, um, if I try to select it. Oh, it still will work. The only difference is it won't let me uh, operate on that word layer. If I wanted to fill it with uh, yellow, it won't let me do that. But if I put it on a separate layer, no problem. So all kinds of effects you can get with your letters.